Hi guys, thank you for joining us at the Sabre Education Experience Forum today. My name is Carly Kenham and I'm going to be sharing with you my Sunset Copper Technique. Um, the inspiration for my technique is all within the name. I love a good sunset and I guess the thing that I love the most about the sunsets is watching and seeing the beautiful transition of colour from light to dark and dark to light. And uh, the thing that stands out for me most is when I look into the sky and I see these beautiful bursts of light and bright just creeping through those transitional colours. So I wanted to imitate that today in my client's hair. This technique is a super friendly, salon friendly technique that you can use easily in the salon. It is a freehand technique. It also um, is used by using triangular melts and I will be respecting the curve of the head by using a teardrop root stretch. So please jump on, um, join me and if you have any questions I will be on the sidelines and happy to help and answer your questions. But most importantly I would love to see your sunset coppers being posted on our page and just remember guys this is super easy technique and also it's very versatile so you can use this in color intensity colors or you can also go for a more natural approach as well. Look forward to seeing your work. Thanks guys. Bye. So as you can see, I have my Pro Series 1 here. This helps to shield and protect the hair from damage and is available to use on any chemical service, which is brilliant. And it helps to also even out porosity so you're getting a better lift when you're lightening. So to prep the hair, all I've done is gone through and created one inch sections, did light little bursts of the Pro Series 1 and combed the product through. So this is quick and easy, but it also gives you the best results. Now, what you can see here is I've chosen to use Lumi Shine colors. I've used Lumi Shine permanent colors with five gold. Lumi Shine is great. It has a bond building Argiplex treatment that helps to treat the hair inside out. It also has a signature conditioner that helps to shield and protect the hair for up to 30 washes. And the color itself helps to stabilize the dyes within the cortex for longer lasting color with minimal ammonia. So this is a great gentle color to be used. Now here you can see this technique. I am using my teardrop root stretch, okay? So the reason why I choose a teardrop root stretch is because I'm respecting the curve of the head and I want a softer line in this color. After I have created my T shape on the top of the head, um, also whenever you're doing this, make sure you're doing this over the client's part line. I've then sectioned the hair off into four quadrants. Now you can see here in this clip that I am not holding the color, the sorry, the section of the hair onto the head. So by doing this, I'm preventing banding. So whenever you apply color when doing a root stretch, Hold the hair off the scalp and off the head to get the best blend. Always make sure that you are tapping the colour on around the client's hairline, following the client's hairline to make sure that you don't do staining, minimal staining, I should say. Now, that was a great example of the tear shape. You could see that. And you could also see that I was using the end of my comb just to melt that color through. So we have three formulas, guys, that I have used today. We are also doing triangular sections to create triangular melts. Now this is our blend and this is how we get our color to come to life. So this is an easy, simple technique to be used, but it creates high impact, which makes it great for salons. Now you can see as well that on the top of the head from say middle of the eyebrow and then we've, I've headed all the way back from both sides of the middle of the eyebrow all the way back to just under the crown to the occipital bone. I've created a valet and I have actually clipped up that up out of my way. Now I'm now working on my triangular sections to create my melt. Now in doing this, when you see me apply the color, you can see that I actually use my brush and go side to side. So what this does and what this will help to do is it makes sure that I'm getting an even saturation and that the color is being milked from one side to the other. 
Now, when I'm melting the colors together, I'm making sure that I clean my hands on every section so I do not contaminate any of my colors. Or I'm also um, cleaning my hands in between the melts to, to again make sure that I'm not turning any of my lighter colors darker. In doing this, you'll see me tap the color right up to the previous color and then I swish my um, brush side to side to make sure I've got that even saturation. And then you'll see whenever I do my melt, I actually get my uh, hand, my sorry, my fingers like a scissor and then I will um, just melt the two colors into each other. Now in doing that, I always make sure that I stay strictly on that line of where the two colors meet because I do not want to exaggerate that and extend my hand down, otherwise I will lose my second formula or third formula. Whenever you see me run the color all the way through, that will either be formula one, which is uh, three quarters 7NC and one quarter 7CC with five volt mixing ratio one to one, or it will be my formula two, which is my 8NRG mixed with five volt mixing ratio one to one. Now, whenever I use either of these colors, I'm using these colors to create contrast, dimension, and depth. And you'll see that I use my 10 NRG spiked with my INCG primarily on the ends only. You will see as we move along that I do use this as well for a pop of color around the face to face frame. Now, in order to create your triangles, what I do particularly is I actually do a zigzag for my first section and then I will then run my comb through on my second section and actually go horizontal from the peak of one zigzag to the other. This will actually create um, the triangle for me so therefore I'm not struggling with, to create triangles. It's a much easier way to do your application as you saw just over near the crown. When you are applying colour on the crown, what you want to do is you want to keep in mind how the hair falls over the crown and you want to create a veil. So whenever I'm working um, on the crown, I will always use my deeper colours, so my formula one or my formula two, to make sure that it keeps the flow and the softness and it also creates a better blend. So. Here you can see that um, this is my second section after my crown and I'm now going to go into the three different melts and this will be formula one, two and three with the 10 N RG on those very ends. You just need to be careful not to be going too high with the 10 N RG when you are near the crown because the last thing you want is this bright pop of color sitting right on top of the crown. And then we repeat the process throughout the whole head. Or I should say throughout the veil. <laughs> you can see that I'm keeping my, my work very clean. So again, just so I know where I have been and where I am going. You can be extremely creative with this guys. Um, depending on what look you're trying to achieve. If you want to have more depth around the face, to, you know, um, if someone has a round face or someone who has like quite a squared face and you just want to soften the width of the face, depth in color is always good to do that for contouring and you can do that as well. So this is where you can use your creativity to customize your color to suit your client. So now I'm taking a horizontal line in section. I've now combed that color from the roots as well, just through, and you can see that soft blend. I'm now taking formula three, which is 10 NRG spiked with INCG, and I'm running that color all the way through and melting it at the roots. Now this is where I want my face framing and my pop of color to come to life. 
always use a foil or a mesh to remove that color out of the client's face. Now my second formula from here was my 8NRG. So I haven't gone straight in with the 7 because I don't want light to contrast the dark too much and then they will fight. So what I want is I want a smooth transition from light to dark. And here I am now using my formula 1, bringing it down and then I have gone in again with my 10 NRG just on those very ends. And that's it. So now we let her process for 35 minutes. And as you can see, we have beautiful sunset copper. We have all those different dimensions, all those different tones and reflex of the copper. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It gives a soft blend, easy to do, very commercial. I love it. I hope you enjoy it as well. Thanks, guys.